Hello and welcome to the Freebooters Network. My name is Dale Kingsmill and I am here to act as your newbie guide to the newbie's guide to Warhammer 40k. Basically, I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to Warhammer. So I have been tasked in this series to take a look at the lore behind Warhammer 40k and try to explain it from a perspective that other newbies can understand. If this is your first time here, you can go back to the original video that starts at the beginning and watch from there. Thank you to everyone who left feedback on the previous video. There was so much helpful stuff in there, particularly the real name of Agro Darts, which I do know it's somewhere so many of you told me. It's, it's something to do with nails. I'm gonna get it. Butcher's, butcher's nails, right? Anyway, last time we basically covered Horace uh, luring various other Primarchs to his cause. But it turns out I left out a couple of details, pretty sure. Uh, Conrad Kurz ended up joining Horace's cause because he was uh, going to face disciplinary action because he did a bunch of like violent stuff or something. Alpharius, it looks like he joined the heresy side of things, mostly because he'd been on the receiving end of a prophecy which said that if Horus won, it would lead to the ultimate downfall of the Chaos Gods. Who knows what Alpharius' motives truly are? Perturabo actually took a really long time to change sides because he was on like a super impossible campaign but I'm also led to believe from other sources that his rivalry with Rogel Dawn, who was like hella loyal to the Emperor, was also another factor in that. So, I mean, make of that what you will. I still don't trust Perturabo because of that whole thing where he just like decimated his own forces when, for no reason, where he just killed 10% of them. Wait, is decimated to have only 10% left or to lose 10%? But hey, we've, we know who's on Horace's side now, but let's cover some of the peeps sticking with the Emperor, huh? How about that? So specifically, Horace knew that a bunch of his brothers were gonna be way too loyal, so he tried to send as many of them as far away from Terra as he could before things went to hell. Among those were, um, oh, oh no, what's his name? Sanguinius from the Blood Angels, because Sanguine, Blood. Rowboat and his Ultramarines, and Lion L. Johnson from the Dark Angels, right? Apparently, the Blood Angels were sent to uh, the Cygnus region, the Cygnus cluster. I don't know where that is, but apparently it's full of demons and very far away. The Ultramarines were sent to Kalth, where they were attacked by a guy called Kor Phaeron, who isn't a Phaeron. Like, we already covered the Phaerons in uh, the, the Necron tier, and this is just a, a totally separate thing, but with the same word. Why this game trying to confuse me? And he and a bunch of cultists attacked the Ultramarines. So they were keeping them busy. And then Lionel Johnson and the Dark Angels had a bunch to deal with as well because there was like a rebellion on Caliban, which was Lionel Johnson's home planet. So basically they were all uh, ordered to go to very far flung parts of the universe and given a bunch of stuff to keep them busy. Because Horus didn't want to take no risks. The Imperial Fists, who are uh, Rogel Dawn's uh, peeps, his chapter, and the White Scars, who are with Jagatai Khan, gotta go fast, they were all stationed way too close to Terra for Horus to, like, try to sneakily get them out of the way without raising suspicion, so he just kind of let them be there. And you know what? He kind of deep down thought that Jagatai Khan would be on his side, which was a mistake. Then Horus tries to get Fulgrim to get Ferris Manus on side, which doesn't work, because even though Fulgrim was best friends with Ferris Manus, Ferris Manus was like, hell nah, I ain't turned to no evil. That's his exact words, that's exactly what he said, verbatim. I was there. So the remaining chapters were the Ravens, the, ra the Raven Guard, the Raven, mmm. The Salamanders, the Iron Hand who, they're Ferris Manus's peeps, right? Because he's got Iron Hands. And the Space Wolves. Um, and I don't really know what's up with them, but they're all on the loyalist side, and I'm sure I'll find out at some point. And then I'll tell you, that's how this works. And then we hit the events of Istvan 3. Istvan 3 was like this rebel planet, I think. They'd declared independence from the Imperium, and so the Emperor was like, Yo, Horus, go get that back for me. And Horus was like, ah, the perfect place to begin uh, executing my plans for 
chaos and getting rid of the emperor and stuff. And so what he did, he flew on over to Istvan III with uh, his his buddies that he'd kind of gotten close to him, like Fulgrim and Engron and that crew and all their space marines. And he kind of orchestrated it so that he separated most of the still loyal space marines from their chapters. And he sent all of them down to the planet to do a bunch of the fighting and whatever. And then he ordered the Istvan 3 be virus bombed. I don't technically know what that means, but it sounds bad. Amongst all the space marines still on the ships, there were some that were loyal and they tried to warn all of their brethren down on the surface. And it doesn't look like it ended well for them. I think they got killed, but their sacrifice was just in time for a bunch of the space marines down on Istvan 3 to hide and take cover from the virus bombing. Unlike the population of Istvan 3 who were all just like, well dead. We're talking like 12 billion lives. It was as if billions of voices cried out at once and then were silenced. This sent out a huge psychic shockwave through the warp, alerting the Emperor to the fact that something was hella wrong, and alerting the Chaos Gods to the fact that Horace was definitely working with them now. There was a group of loyalists led by a guy called Captain... 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 Captain Garrow. Captain Garrow, who was from the Death Guard, and uh, they actually managed to escape the fleet that had been orbiting around Istvan III on this dinky little damaged ship called the Eisenstein, which is super cool. And so I'm super excited to hear more about that, and we'll catch up on them next time maybe, probably. But for now, let's, uh, let's check in. Let's check in. I'm really, my words. Let's check in on Angron, who, uh, having discovered that the Photon bombing? A virus bombing? Oh boy. Had not been completely 100% successful in killing everyone on the planet, all them space marines. Finding that out, he flew into a rage. Unsurprising. He and all his world eater guys just like storm the planet and go to kill stuff. Cause that's what they do best. Horace was like, oh, Engron, you were so stupid, but backed him up anyway, and sent a bunch of space marines from all the different uh, her heretical chapters that he had with him down to back up Engron and his guys. And the loyalist space marines on Istvan 3 fought so bravely, they tried so hard for so long, there weren't that many of them, but they held their own until eventually Horace managed to uh, force Engron to withdraw his forces. They all got off the planet surface and they just bombarded the surface from orbit until every single loyalist left had been killed. So now it ain't no secret that Horace is a, is a villain. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the Emperor reacts. I hope that you enjoyed this installment. If I got something terribly, horrifically wrong, make sure that you leave the correction in the comments so that other newbies can go and check those for accurate information. I know I've mentioned it before, but we're looking to get uh, more content other than just mine up on this channel very soon. A bunch of folk from the uh, Freebooters Podcast Network are gonna start making videos and I'm very excited for you to see that. As always, my name is Dale Kingsmill. You can find me on my own channel, Monarchs Factory. I would love to have you there and I will see you next time with the next installment of the Newbies Guide. See you then. <laughs>